gather on this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. During last week, we celebrated National Teachers Appreciation Day. And let us continue to thank all those teachers and those former teachers for the gifts that they gave to so many people, so many of us, through our formative years and helped us to become the people that we are. This is a long weekend where some are celebrating Columbus Day, others Indigenous People Day, but we hope that we use the opportunity to reflect on the histories of this country, the ways in which different people help make this country what it is, but also some of the unreconciled issues that need to be addressed in order for us to continue as one people in unity under God. Our service continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer following the introductory sentence. The question is asked in today's Gospel, what must we do to inherit eternal life? Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we proclaim together glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Amos, a reading from Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground, they hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. 
you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you just as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for the day, Psalm 90, verses 12 through 17, we will read the psalm in unison. So together, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading, reading is taken from the Epistle to the Hebrews. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides the soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. So glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and father. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of heaven? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for my sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mother and children, the fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. My sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the gospel of the Lord. And the rich man asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. For anyone who has relocated, quite possibly here to Florida, or moved from a house to a condo, understand the challenges of downsizing. For those who have gone on a long trip and tried to get all their essentials into a 50 pound bag, they also have a sense of what this experience is like. I got a sense of that as when I came to St. James, I came with just two suitcases and then a large box that was shipped after. I came to more with faith than with possessions. And today's gospel is about that. It is about us being able to right-size our life. We encounter a man who engages our Lord Jesus Christ, who seems, as they say, to have it all. 
He's a kind of a historic version of a combination of Bill Gates and Billy Graham combined. He seems to be someone with lots of influence, lots of money, but he has obviously lived a, a moral life and seems to be blessed by God. However, despite his power, his status, his piety, something is obviously missing. His angst is betrayed by that question. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? We don't know exactly what the man is looking for. Maybe he is seeking assurance that for being a good, law-abiding person, God was proud of him. But as the disciples found out, and many of us have learned, when we encounter the Lord, we have to expect out of an abundance of love for us, as he conveys to this man, we are going to be challenged on our faith journey. Our Lord deflects the flattery of the man back to the label of good teacher. Our Lord replies, no one is good but God alone. And then our Lord challenges his righteous thinking that he has arrived by underscoring that goodness is not something that you can attain or possess, but rather it is part of our faith journey because we ultimately are on a journey of redemption for the sins that all of us have committed in our life's course. The man gets a shock to the soul then when he is made to understand what he must go through, what he thought was already an accomplished life was just the beginning. Our Lord tells him, go sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. And we read, not unreasonably, that the man is shocked, and he went away grieving. He was unable to answer the call to discipleship. And we realize in the gospel that the disciples are perplexed when they hear how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because when we read the Hebrew scriptures, one of the interpretation of divine favor was your accumulation of wealth. In Deuteronomy, Chapter 28, verse 2, we are told, All blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, they say, The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. This is a notion. This notion of material reward is still preached in some churches today. But we we understand that the road to salvation is by the way of the cross. And we are called as disciples to pick up our cross and follow. There's confusion over this reference to a camel going through the eye of the needle. It's not to be taken literally. Some interpret it going back to the narrow gate that said existed in Jerusalem. Some said it was a, a mistranslation, that the words in Greek camel and rope are very similar. But it is not to be taken literally. Today's gospel is not a call to poverty. All of us understand that there is nothing romantic about being impoverished. The work that is done by this church and others at the Jubilee Center is a testimony to the struggles and the hardships of those who live on the edge of survival. 
Today is National Mental Health Day. And we are reminded of all of those persons, some we may know, who are challenged by the pressures of life and living, many of whom, if they don't get the right treatment and support, can find themselves on the streets. We know that the unhealthy diets that poverty can bring can limit brain, bone, neurological development, especially amongst children. It poverty puts us at risk. And we have a sense that our Lord is not trying to romanticize that because in his feeding of the multitude, he appreciates, as is said in, in, in popularly, that possibly oh, the way to someone's soul may also be via the stomach. Further, we know that the accumulation of a certain amount of wealth is essential for avoiding the being needy in our retirement. So it's not about saying, just give it up, move on, forget it all, abandon life and abandon the responsibilities of living. But on the other hand, our Lord is calling out this culture of accumulation that is increasing the gaps between the haves and the have-nots. That demand for an insatiable desire for more is fueling this catastrophic climate change as we who live in the north excessively and extensively consume a disproportionate amount of the world's resources. But what our Lord is doing in today's gospel is reiterating what we hear in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. The point being where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What he is underscoring is what we should be aware of. Money cannot buy happiness, nor can it help heal ruptured relationships, or build meaning in a life that has none. Happiness ultimately comes from our spiritual wealth, more than our material wealth, more than in giving, than in receiving. But it sounds hard. And the disciples ask the question, then who can be saved? And our Lord says to them, for mortals, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Today's gospel is reminding us that salvation is not some cheap grace that we can procure. It is ours by God's mercy and love alone. And as our Lord engages this man, we notice that he is focusing on the second table of the commandments, 4 to 10, which focus on relationships with others on this earth. But then when he picks up the temple and really presses the man, he focuses on the first table, those commandments 1 to 3, which focuses on our relationship with God. So today's gospel is not about wealth per se, but for us to recognize that we are utterly dependent on God's mercy and love to be saved. It is not the good works that we do, but it is God's love for us ultimately manifested in the giving and the sending of his son to die for us that leads to eternal life. Moreover, our Lord, and pointing to the rich man, to his possessions, he wants us to unburden ourselves of whatever is causing us not to rely on God. And that can be anything. He calls us to the accumulation of spiritual wealth that will allow us to come closer to
to the kingdom of God. Our souls are not hungry, conscious of what the press, the media, people might think. Our souls are not hungry for fame or wealth or power. Those rewards, ultimately we realize, can create as many problems as they solve. Very often, our souls are hungry for meaning, for a sense that we can figure out how to live so that our lives matter, so that the world will be at least a little bit better for our having passed through it. So to get to the point of being generous with our lives, of giving ourselves to those in need, this is not a precondition of being a disciple, but a consequence. It is the outer working, our generosity, our love, of God's indwelling in us. In our discipleship, we are called to downsize our wants and right-size our lives so that we no longer cling to our possessions or our own notions of our goodness. We are called as brothers and sisters in Christ, as disciples on the road to salvation, to trust in the one who can lead us through the eye of the needle, knowing that we have nothing to lose. We follow God knowing that we have nothing to lose because we have already gained it all in Christ. We follow God knowing that we have nothing to lose because we have already gained it all in Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith in our triune God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to offer up the prayers of the people, let us focus our minds, our hearts, our souls on God's call to trust in him.
Let us pray. The prayers of the people are found on page 383, form 1. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, our Anglican community, the Church of the Province of West Africa, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, Bernie, our rural dean, Guy and Mario, our priests, and for all the clergy around the nation as we celebrate Clergy Appreciation Month, let us pray to the Lord. For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, Josh, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the county of Broward, this city of Hollywood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For social barriers which divide to crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions are healed, and we live in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list. Mary Rodriguez, Stan Allen Jr., Sarah Allen, Nicholas and Jonathan Saunders, Heather and Ed Reed, Riley Rupert Richendaller, Nicole Goodwin, Pat Miller, Stephanie and Jackson Gomez, Theodora Jurican, Jackie and James Lowe, Zawilla Barath, Veronica Gatto, Maud Fernander, Kay Fung, Jan Pushkar, Rudy Ford, Varen Anderson, Thelma Camacho, Veronica Joyce, Roberta Grimmer, Karen Backus, Ken Martinez, Deacon Bob Damon, Donna Talbert, Brenda Keep, Marjorie Jackson, David Andrew, Beverly Skin, Delmar Frost, and the Kern family. Let us pray to the Lord. For those celebrating birthdays, Francisca Maduro, Kim Sands, Rodney Paisley, James Terrafino Jr., Louis Maduro, Nicholas Adamula, Ashley Huete, Wayne Evans, and anniversaries, Sean and Phil Yannon, belated blessings to Rosemary and William Saunders, and for anyone or anything which you care to mention. Let us pray to the Lord. For the clients of the Jubilee Center, the people of Madagascar, particularly the women and children, the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, and for all those dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
St. James, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. And we conclude our prayers with the prayer of protection from hurricanes. Almighty God, creator and redeemer of humankind, grant to us, your supplicant people, protection against the ravages of hurricanes, fires, floods, and other calamities, that in tranquility of weather, we may rejoice in the comfort that we ever desire and always make right use of your great goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as an act of penitence, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Amen. Please stand for the greeting of the peace. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share God's peace. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace. I'll ask you to sit for some of the notices before we go into our offertory. And we'll start with the introductions. I just want to recognize somebody who is a very important part of our church, and we have a beautiful wealth. And we'll be doing this every week. And that would be Yvonne Casey. She is a writer here and a writer of this. Thank you. And I thank you all for the support that you have been giving me for these two plus years. While I've been with you all at St. James, it has been marvelous. It has been wonderful. It has been so fulfilling. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And I ask you to use this opportunity to reach out to any other clergy that you all are close to, to remind them of all that they have brought to your life. It is inspiring to all of us, and it means much 
when we are reassured that we are able to add value, to make a difference, to help people in their journey of faith. As again, we, we want to, to welcome or, or recognize Yvonne's presence as, as um, Diane mentioned next Saturday, on the 16th, next Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m., there's going to be a service of thanksgiving for Yvonne and Claudette's brother, Ernest, that's going to take place here at the church at 10.30 a.m. Members of the parish are invited all. As I mentioned, tomorrow is a public holiday in some countries, in some states, it's recognized as Columbus Day, and in some cities and others, it is Indigenous People Day. And what it speaks to, as I said, is the different ways in which the history of this country have been recorded or interpreted or celebrated. But in it all, it is to recognize the contributions that different groups and different peoples have made to this United States, and hoping that we can, as Christians, as people of faith, that we can move forward with love, with understanding, with fellowship and peace. So for whatever you all do tomorrow, for those who may have the day off, I hope you do have a blessed day. Next week, we are hoping or we expect to welcome Dr. Daniel Eisenberg and his wife Judy. We are hoping that they will join and support our music ministry at St. James, Daniel has been an organist in churches both in New York and Florida and has a passion for playing. I'm excited, as I'm sure you are, to be able to get the ministry of music back into this church. It is something that I have been longing for, something that I have missed, as I'm sure many of you have. So I ask you to keep this in your prayers. But on a practical note, we are wanting and trying to identify some choristers to support the music ministry. There are some of you all here that I am aware have done this in the past. Some of you all who I am also aware have wonderful voices that have not necessarily been di directly involved in our music ministry, but I ask you to give every consideration to this. I want our new organist to feel supported. As I felt supported when I came here, I want him to feel that tangible support. And one of those things is to find people, and I'm not asking you to, it is not an audition, looking for the, the best of voices. Um, I know I am automatically disqualified because I have none at all, but for the rest of you, whom God has given some gifts, please, consider bringing them to bear for the benefit of the parish, but more also, moreover, for the upliftment of our liturgy and our celebration. It is my hope that we can bring more sung elements into our liturgy to raise the tempo, to bring us closer to, to that spiritual connection that we all look for, both in our worship, but in our life as well. I want to thank all of those who have been uh, organizing or will get involved in the trunk or treat on Saturday, the 30th of October. It is there in the notices from 5 to 7 p.m. And I ask you to support this as we reach out to the younger ones in our community and our neighborhood to come together and celebrate. Again, I am thankful that we are going to be resuming our Sunday school on October the 17th, which is next Sunday. Thankful again to those who are leading it and again to the parents um, or grandparents to remind the children that there's an opportunity or our younger members to come together in fellowship from next Sunday. Our Bible study continues online. Again, it has been most engaging, most fulfilling, and I continue to invite you all to join us through the Zoom link that is there. Those are our notices, and we will go from here into our preparations for Holy Communion.
Our hymn for communion is a short 1535, God of mercy, God of grace. Oh. I invite you now to stand for the dark song. Let us give thanks to the Lord your God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, 
in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food of new and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace and at the last days bring us with the blessed virgin saint james and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now give thanks for this foretaste of the heavenly banquet to pray together the post-communion prayer on page 365. We say together, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we have the blessing, I would ask for any current or former teachers amongst us to please stand. Teachers. So anyone who has been in teaching service, and I want to just recognize y'all. Everyone look around and see those who have given to so many generations through their service. We thank you again. We thank you. Thank you. I was to do that during the notices, but you know, at my age, I don't remember everything. <laughs> Please bow your heads to receive God's blessing. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, our service has ended. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.